as far as round one goes, uh, it's going to be a tight game. Uh, <laughs> is it possible the very first game of the year could be a draw? There is a, I mean, Ooh, I, I, yeah. as, as, as the Carlton fan of the group, there is an every possibility. Um, Take a shot when Meso smiles today. Uh, so we're going to be sober as birds. Probably will. I mean, there's no smirk on that boy. So uh, uh, this is <laughs> welcome to the AWO podcast. I am JD. Uh, fun week for the for the Carlton fans. Uh, we'll get into it in a bit, but. Uh, Shattered coming into today. <laughs> well, as Jack Rewalt said, and that's what I'm going to say right now, it feels like, what, shark shit. It feels like a morgue right now. Yep. And I think we know why. We are recording this at, what, 7.20, 7.25 right now. The game between St Kilda and Frio has just finished. Obvious results, <laughs> but we'll touch on that a little bit later. Uh, we are officially on Spotify. Now, me having a half a lemon in my head, I uploaded the season preview during the weekend <laughs> as the round went on. <laughs> so, oh, but boy, getting that Spotify approval was like a job application. The you mini it, steps, though. the mini steps. Oh boy, it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's just stick to YouTube. Let's find another audio platform. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, no, we got like. The two days where I'm like, oh, we can't get the feed up. We finally got the feed up. And then it said, oh, you need uh, you need a cover up. So I uploaded cover up. You need to verify your email address. Verified that. Do you have an alternative email address for security reasons? It was nightmare, an absolute nightmare. The things things you've had to go through this week. The hoops. The well, fitness I mean, do tests. You, do you want to introduce yourself and say with Mason? <laughs> what? For what reason? I mean, every week we should. <laughs> All right. My name's Nate. Or you can call me Mystic Mac, given what happened last round. I was going to say, we forgot the Mystic. I mean, Mystic Mac, JD Mystic Mac, Meso Mystic Mac. We, we all covered it. We all touched on it, and we're going to claim it. The draw. The very first game of the season was a draw. Mm -hmm. it was, there was a possibility, as we said. Absolutely. It was, it was going to be a tight game. And the possibility of a draw, it happened. So we'll start off with Carlton v Richmond then. And I think mm. JD can cover this game in depth because you're the Carlton fan. You've got the detailed notes on there. I'll let JD cover most of the game. I'll have my thoughts and opinions on the last two minutes. Meso may chime in as well. I'm just so, I'm just happy we got a draw to start the season. I love I a think draw. we all are. <laughs> So do you want to give it a bit of context as to why we are like why we love a draw so much? Just just so people can understand it. Oh um is it masochistic? That's the word pretty much enjoying other people's pain. And that's what it is. Just when a draw happens, nothing happens. I've never yes. been to a draw. There's there's weird. no team song. It's weird, mm -hmm. but it's a great feeling for me. All right, we love a good foot, quick footy story. Quick footy story. I think it was, I, I mean, we looked it up a years ago. I can't remember the year exactly, but I went to three draws in a row. It was the weirdest season I've ever been to. And without fail, the greatest thing was every single time, Thunderstruck by ACDC played. So as we're like watching on Friday, we're like, what's playing in the background? What's playing in the background? <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. We're not sure. We need a, we need someone to confirm that for us. I mean, I, I mean, I need someone at the ground to. I'll, I should get that. I'll see if I can get that confirmed for us mid <laughs> midway through the pod. I want to be surprised um, if 90,000 90, fans signed an NDA saying we're not going to tell you what happened after the game. Just it was a draw. <laughs> let's just get over it. Let's get over it. Move on. All right. Let's go into it. So Carlton versus Richmond. Uh, eight goals, ten to eight goals, ten. Fifty-eight apiece. A draw to start the season. A uh, mm. couple of notes that I made. Um, Lewis Young is an absolute legend. Uh, that man absolutely saved Carlton throughout the game. I think he had 20 disposals. I think it was 12 intercepts again or something like that, or 12 intercept possessions. 
the man is on fire. I mean, well warranted that we signed him again for a few extra a few extra years. I tell you what, the dogs still must be kicking themselves because I tell you, how, how do you have a player of that caliber sitting there and just never use him? It's it's astounding to me still. Well, they used um, him just in the ruck. That was in the ruck. Yeah, off. yeah. Whoa. So great to see that some of the work that he's doing. I mean, if I'm, I think Mason made the comment that if you check his back pocket, I think I, I think <laughs> Rewalt might be in there still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so some other other notes I made. So Taranto, he, I think he was absolutely well worth the uh, pick up. I think he had, the, you know, I think it was 30 or 32 disposals. Absolutely killed it, you know, around the ground. Uh, definitely looked worth it. Still not convinced on Hopper as of yet. I'm sure he's going to be fine. But, you know, he he's definitely going to take a bit more time than Taranto. He just slowed straight in beautifully. I've got it written that um, it was a bit of a surreal game. I think, I think it was just odd all around. I think... Carlton and Richmond both didn't feel like they turned up to play. It felt like mm. it was one of the oddest first round games we've ever ever watched. I mean, for 58 points in the first game of the season, I don't think either team really got going to, mm. to start the season. It, it still feels like next week both teams have to go and improve something <laughs> because they still feel like they're playing pracky games or something. So, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, two, two points apiece, you know, it's just move on to the next round for Carlton and Richmond. There's not too much to really say about this game. I'm sure there's there's things we could say in terms of what happened in the last two minutes. I'm sure you'll cover that, Nate. Um, but yeah. I've got written that Carlton might kill me. I, I, I think this football club will be the death of me eventually. Uh, how many close games am I going to have to endure? In the, in, like, I think I've endured in the last three, three to five years that many close games that my heart has taken that much of a beating. And this year, if it keeps happening, I'm not sure I'll make it through the podcast year, boys. Like, we might need a replacement <laughs> near the end of the year if Carlton keep playing this way. Hey, um, uh, and special, wait, wait, special comment that I wrote. Uh, now, I had to include this. It was buried in my notes. Uh, I think Mason may kill Blake Akers by the end of this year. Uh, you may He may fly over to Victoria and kill that man. Uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> No, I think dropping, <laughs> that mark, tr- dropping that mark with seconds to go, I think Mason's like, fuck him. No. Yeah, no, he, it's not worth my time. <laughs> yeah, not worth my time. I guess my two cents on the game would be my standout was Daniel Rioli. I reckon he absolutely tore yeah, it apart. Him and his, uh, him and Maurice, Maurice Rioli. Am I, am I pronouncing his first name correctly? I heard different iterations on commentary. It was mm. Morris or Maurice. Morris or Maurice. I mean, either way, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. It's, we get um, both. They're amazing together. The the connection, and they just tore the game apart. They were the difference for the Tigers. It kept them in them. Kept it in. Oh, Jesus, English. Kept them <laughs> in it. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I'm looking forward to see more of them, if they can keep up that form. Yeah, compared to the previous seasons, it was like the intensity was off. Mm. you'd always get like fast hitting you know goal for goal games between richmond carlton to start the season you would have thought maybe 116 all instead of 100 or instead of 58 all i'm sure yeah again you're feeling a bit deflated giving it was a draw but Mm. i'm sorry a draw is a draw and i love it i did want to touch on the last two minutes though because there were there's there's a bit of criticisms involved some maybe unwarranted some i'm going to defend I think McGovern took the mark in defensive 50 with about two minutes ago. He kicks it straight to Motlop. He hand passes it straight to Lockie O'Brien, who takes four bounces along the wing. Uh, uh, yeah. This is where the it's this is where the criticism comes in for him because he kicks to Harry Mackay, who falls over, and nearly takes that mark. The yeah, criticism on one. Was, yeah, the criticism of it was why didn't he hold it up or you know just milk the clock or whatever. You got Daniel Rioli giving chase. And Meso touched on it, you know, he kept him in the game. That sort of chase kept Richmond in the game. Lockyer Brunk could hold it up, kick the backwards, milk the clock, Carl win by a goal, quiet game, you know, four points, history, whatever. Uh, the five on one, bit unfortunate. Harry Mackay, you know, didn't have a good game at all. Um, mm. Can't really blame. He slipped over. I mean, it would have been great if he took the mark and then, you know, kicked the point to make it seven points or two goals and seal the game. Uh, Liam Baker's kick to Manzel. Underrated, not being talked or praised enough. If Baker's kick falls short, 
Saad's going to chop it off or it's three on one Carlton. They get the crumbs. They hold it up yet again. Had to, had to be absolutely perfect. Had to be perfect. Manzel dived for it. So perfect kick. But the kick to Lynch. Now, do you, have you blamed anyone for it? Do you have any criticisms there, John? Because I've got, I've got some. It might be a bit harsh, but I'll let you have your thoughts first before I go into it. I think I just don't know how he got one out uh, so so clearly. You can say I think it was Weeders who was standing behind him who just threw you know did the old throw your hands up in the air. I'm not too sure what really happened in that situation. I mean, I think I've watched it a few times and kind of went. <laughs> I'm just not sure how he got free. Is probably the more the well, uh, it wasn't really. He wasn't really free. And prior to that kick, it, Richmond had 65 inside 50s for just seven goals. And you thought statistically Carlton would, you know, chop it off or, you know, ice the game or save the game from there. Uh, you had TDK and Silvani just jogging or walking on the on the defensive 50 arc. Would have thought maybe they can fill a hole. Now, granted, it was a kick to a contest, so there was no leads. But I still think they could have done a little bit more defensively. Uh, but defensively, you had Weeders behind Lynch. You had McGovern go for a spoil, fail. And Lewis Young went for it halfway through, then backed out a bit. Can't really blame Lewis Young. He didn't really get involved in the contest too much. Can't bolt him for the game he had. I just thought statistically and the probabilities involved of it, it's just, it's harsh to walk away with a draw in that situation. If you take out the last two minutes and think of it overall, I think Richmond were the better side. Rioli was one of the best on grounds. Taranto, best mid midfielder on ground. Nank, Nankervis, too good in the ruck. Can't, not going to fault TDK too much against Nankervis one-on-one. It's funny how when a draw happens, there's always the debate of do we need overtime or do we need extra time? As you can see in JD's background, <laughs> uh, he's on the we need overtime. It's, it's funny because I'm only putting it up there as a joke. Like, I really don't. I don't want overtime. It's just more as a, you know, as a little funny Carlton nod, but... Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I don't. I definitely don't think we need overtime. I, I don't think we've ever, ever needed. That's probably a good way to segue into the next game because this is where I have some opinions about the deck. But I'll let you, like you, so graciously let me cover. I'll let you cover this one, Nate. Long v Collingwood Friday night, hands down one of the all-time great away wins in Collingwood's history. <laughs> Geelong can have the twenty twenty two premiership, but Collingwood's got the four points. That's all that really matters. Great away win. Uh, and the streak is over. I mean, we mm. thought, oh, if Geelong can get eight wins in a row at the start of the season, they'll break the all-time record. Not happening now. No. You commentators uh, curse them. Dead in the water. I don't care. I don't care. Collingwood won. I'm, I've done my job. <laughs> it's true. All right. Uh, I'll get into the team stats first, I guess, before I get into I think, player analysis for Collingwood. It's going to be a bit biased, but I thought touching on that, will give in-depth reason on why we won. So team stats, Collingwood won the hitouts and the clearances. Now, last year for Collingwood, it was either they won the hitouts and then got flogged in the clearances, contributing to why Collingwood won so many close games. Uh, and that's why Tom Mitchell came in to help out in the midfield, get some more clearances, get become a more, mm. more accountable in the midfield. Uh, Collingwood still leaking goals. Uh, defensive issue, that's always going to happen. But Geelong always expose us in that. In that part, they did that for three quarters. Three times they had the lead of about 20-odd points, multiple goals here and there. Uh, a little bit frustrating as a Collingwood supporter to see Geelong 16 goals won. Uh, they weren't freak goals by any means. They just they can't miss against us. There's no way Gary Rowan's going to jump for contested marks against Carlton or against any other opposition like, except Collingwood. It's a little bit ridiculous to see him play well against us. Uh, as far as Collingwood goes, uh, I'll start off with the bad news. Uh, Jeremy Howe, uh, broken arm. That was... Mm -mm. Uh, I don't need to see the replay of that. The way he was sort of clutching, I reckon he was covering a bone sticking out of his arm. Uh, well, just oh, talking no. about it was a bit, yeah. yeah. But that's genuinely... Uh, I genuinely reckon that's why he was covering his arm. I reckon if... I mean, I don't know if you ever had something or ever seen someone like that, but I reckon you'd be immediately... Oh, I don't yeah. want to look at that. <laughs> Uh, during the week, Jeremy Howe signed a one-year extension as well. So That's a curse. Here, here I was yeah. thinking, oh, if, if he's one serious injury away from you know retiring. Uh, he'll play yeah. on next year, but yeah, not sure when he'll play again this year. Uh, Reef McKinnis came on as the sub, made an impact. He only had four touches, but kicked two goals, one, and then had a goal assist as well. Very mm. useful for disposals. Bobby Hill in his first game, three goals. Bobby the Hill. Uh, 
Bobby the Hill, uh, only a second time in his career, he's kicked three goals in a game. It's always one or two goals. Uh, John Noble, I bring him up, 29 disposals across half back, out of contracts. I think he's still on the rookie list for Collingwood. So, wow, uh, really? He's, he's, earning, he's earning some big oh. goals there. Could be could be our Blake Akers. He, have a, he has a big year and then he eps off, he, he buggers off for a future third somewhere. I thought some Collingwood senior players had an off night. Not Pendlebury, but Jack Crisp, still side bottom, and Tyler Adams. Some tried, and some just had a flat nine in general. Tom Mitchell had 21 disposals, but 10 clearances, and I thought he was the point of difference oh, wow. in the final quarter. He mm. led Collingwood's charge in the final quarter, something that we needed, something that we missed uh, in round three last year against Geelong and in the qualifying final. People are going to say Tom Mitchell needs to have 20, or not needs, but has to have 25 or 30 odd disposals. He's at, his disposal average is going to go down this year compared to his best at Sydney and Hawthorne. So long as he's doing his job, 20, 25 disposals, 10 clearances a game and makes other players look good, that's all he needs to do no. in the midfield. His leadership in there is going to go a long way for Collingwood. He made Jordan Ngoi look like a great player out there. I've never seen Jordan Ngoi have a game where he starts off quiet and then builds into it. No, he started off quiet and he just got better and better and better as the game went on. 25 disposals, three goals. He may get the three Brownlow votes with that final goal. Who knows? If it's not him, that's going to be Nick Dacos. 35 disposals, I think, off, across half back. Josh Dacos as well, nearly 30 to disposals as well. Peter Dacos, my God, he's the Genghis <laughs> Khan of Australia. The offspring he has produced. I actually think you'll you'll like this little little uh, dot point I've got written down. Um, and this is something that you, you you said it last week. This is something that you'll want. Uh, I've got the Dacos boys will lead Collingwood to a flag one day. Yeah, it might not be this year, but they those two boys are going to be the reason you win a flag one day. Uh, they are absolute stars. <laughs> it's not because of Josh or Nick Dacos. It's because of Peter Dacos. Um, <laughs> it's Peter Dacos can have sex with my girlfriend. If it's going to create another <laughs> Dacos. I don't it's care. Going to raise a kid like that. Exactly. Uh, I'm pretty sure Peter Dacos had a vasectomy at 19 years old as well. <laughs> no, that's not everybody else. <laughs> uh, uh, but end of the day, Geelong or Collingwood, 22 point winners. As for Geelong, though, they're still all class. Again, it's mm. frustrating for them to be that good and be accurate. 16 goals won. This might be a bit not controversial, but. I'm leaning on this side of defense on this one. A Safa in defense gets a thumbs yeah. up from me. Yeah, boy. So you reckon he gets a thumbs up as well? Absolutely. That's like one of my massive points. I like That's the Estava. I, I like the Estava the Estava experiment. Estava. He's gonna. Yeah. I think it's gonna go the same way um, Paddy McCartan was down back for Sydney last year. I now JD, you've got Geelong next round. If Harry yep. Mackay is not firing, I'm sorry, but Asaba is going to clean him up. Kind of interesting because I don't think Harry s starts seasons too well. So I reckon he could be taken to the cleaners next week. It's going to be interesting next Friday or Thursday night between Carlton and Geelong. Is it a possibility <laughs> that that game will be a draw as well? <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's a possibility. No, uh, that one, I, I mean, that one, I feel like there'll be an outright winner. Mm, <laughs> definitely. Gonna be, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's going to yeah, be another definitely. tight game, though. Should be another oh. tight one. I mean, I, I also do, don't know because Geelong love beating us up for some reason. We get scared yeah, against Geelong. That. Mason, you got anything you want to add from the Collingwood-Geelong game? Um, well, yeah, just to add that, uh, yeah, Tommy Mitchell was looking like the missing piece. He added... Doesn't need all the touches as the world. If he's going to get 10, 10 bloody clearances, I'd like that. That'd be nice. The booze for Ollie Henry. That was fun. Hey, uh, shout out to Ollie Henry and getting chased down by Darcy Moore. Hey, that God. was one of the best things I've seen since uh, um, since Heath Shaw. <laughs> he came up behind him like a librarian. You never heard of him. <laughs> How's how's injury gave me Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secret vibes? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what else have I got? Myocheck oh. would look good in purple, and uh, 
Dang it, that boy is all right. Bobby Hill looks great. Bobby uh, the Hill. I can't get over that, that comment. Oh, jeez. Geelong not using a rock. Like, Paddy, Paddy being the rock in the forward 50. Or Hawkins, you know, interchange. Oh, Hawkins is always the forward 50. Oh, yeah, right down there. yeah, but seeing Paddy in the rock was a bit interesting. Uh, the, the major turning point was your, your fitness. You just outrun them. I was blown away. Like, you just kept going and going and going. Like, there's some goddamn Energizer bunnies out there. Like, and then the old, <laughs> the old men couldn't handle it anymore. And then you got on top of them. And then that was got it. on top of the old boys and gave them what's for. <laughs> I think it was about three, four weeks ago. Uh, Ed Sheeran, of course, took place at the MCG. So they took the whole, they ripped up the whole deck uh, for Ed Sheeran. So, you know, oh, we goodness. were promised before. I believe it was the Thursday night. They were promising like sure footed. It's going to be fine under the deck. You know, the Carlton game, it did look like that, and Richmond game, they looked like they were sort of holding back a little bit. Again, not sure what the reasons that could have been. Could have been the deck. My big thing to bring it up is mainly the injuries on Friday on uh, Friday night. So the main the main three that we've taken out of the game are uh, Tom Stewart done uh, out with a knee, uh, Sam DeConing uh, also out with a knee, and Jeremy Howe, you know, of course, coming down of his arm and compounding the shit out of that thing my thing with the deck is it it looked hard it looks hard it's not i'm not saying there's a problem with it it just looks hard so how how's like big um landing was probably my big example of it is it's Mm. he came down so hard on his arm and i know that you know it was probably the way he landed and things like that but yeah. you're also wondering, like, if there was just no cushioning as well for him to take that blow. It also looked like when um, Tom Stewart got his leg caught. Now, that also looked a bit like a freak accident. But when mm. he got his leg caught, you also wonder if that's also because there's no real gi- – there's no give in the turf sort of thing. There was the Melbourne Dogs game um, on the Saturday night, which, again, there was no real outlying issues with that game. So yeah. I think it's a bit more of a watch this space rather than a – the MCG is broken. Let's let we need to fix this thing. I think it's more let's see because we had three games and we had three very odd results. We, you know, we had you know an odd an odd draw, injuries galore, and then a game that basically just was fine. I know, yeah, we had Melbourne Melbourne and the dogs, nothing serious happened there. Mm. Uh, and watching Hawthorne Essendon, I saw some players falling over, but that was about uh, it. Hawthorne Essendon as well. So sorry, so yeah, four games. You know, decent sample size for the MCG so far. So probably gets a tick so far. Um, but yeah, watch this space on that deck because there could could be something up with it. I mean, I also reckon Marvel's probably a little bit of a watch this space because you got to remember they had Red Hot Chili Peppers there. So, you know, watch mm. this space on some of those decks that sort of gave up themselves earlier in the year to entertainment. Uh, we'll get into the Marvel Stadium one then. Uh, Saturday afternoon, North Melbourne against West Coast. Mason. Alistair Clark, yeah, the Alistair Clarkson era has officially mm. begun, and North Melbourne got the win. I was impressed with West Coast. I actually was. Uh, okay, their transitions looked improved initially. Um, they upped their pressure from last year. They're still not holding their tackles though. Outside of Jimby Gimby, he is just a tackling machine. Him and <laughs> him and Dreadlocks Cully is going to be scary. I was impressed with the transition. It's much faster. Like it usually last year, as I as I talked about, there was a kick and then it would wait, hold up play, and then either kick backwards or sideways to look for the switch. And this one, it was a handball onto a running player to then look forward, which is what we need to see in this new era of AFL, new footy. Um, their tackling pressure much improved as well, much much more improved. Um, they didn't land enough though, which, you know, still room for improvement, but another good thing to, you know, look back on and be like, yes, we did good work there. North, same thing. North's pressure was phenomenal. I yeah, thought that's was. probably the big most big improvement. Big yeah. improvement. Mm. I was very, very happy with their improvement in their defense. And once again, their transition was pretty good. Lots of high balls for West Coast. I'm just going back to West Coast quickly. And like trying to get the ball behind. Now, 
I don't know if that's just gameplay for the game with the the lack of tools that they have, and you know, just hoping to, the smalls to run onto it and get easy goals out the back. But I liked it. I liked the change of game plan and not just game plan A and then that's it. Mix it up as the game went along and they they change things up. Ruse. What can we say about the ruse? Tackling, tackling, tackling. Uh, Nick Larkey, you fucking superstar. <laughs> he played, he, he is. played out of his skin. Man, he was something fucking special. Cunners, <laughs> Cunners is a scary looking fella. Yes. When he's on, when he goes beast mode, he is scary. Mm. Uh, he was he was absolutely on. <laughs> I, I got a couple of notes here for you. Um, no. We love the cheesel. Uh, oh, yes. oh, you might have heard, it, heard me in the background. Cheesel the cheesel. Cheese uh, TV. Yes. I tell you what, the boy, the boy's got it. Um, the schnoz. So, absolutely. Uh, so I've got it written down in, in my uh, news. He he's basically now it's it's a record in VFL uh, in in AFL history, not VFL mm. history. Mm. Uh, he has had the most disposals of a player since 1984 in a debut game. So, Whoa. well done, Harry Sheasel. <laughs> You've done well, boy. Across half back too. He's mm. never played across half back. He what, was really? just on fire. That. He had the ball on a string. He was mm. he was killing it from. I think I think in the first 15 seconds, which actually I should be able to confirm this in my notes. One sec. Yeah. No, he, he took he took he took the first yeah. mark of the game. There you go. She's all the cheesel on fire. Three touches in the first two minutes. Mm. So, you know, the kid was on fire from, you know, the the bounce of the ball till it till the siren final siren went. Yeah, uh, Tristan Zeri very unlucky. Yeah. Um. You know, went down with a knee. Um. You know, he was backed in to to replace Goldie this year. You know, that's that's a, that's an absolute shame. So, bit of a they've now got to go back to the to the Goldstein well and. uh continue on with the old fella so that's a unfortunate we don't know how we don't know the extent of the injury yet mm. uh there's there, there's no time frame on when his injury was very odd injury too just caught underneath him as he was sort of tackled and just sort of bent oddly and that was it i do think great great recruits on both sides and i think north's pressure was just through the roof uh, especially you know to run themselves out as far as uh five point winners that's something that i don't think they would have done last year to hold even just to hold on to a game like mm. that, they would have been overwhelmed in that last five minutes, but they just kept the pressure up, pressure up. Even though they were getting scored on in that last five minutes, they were at least, you know, pressure up, pressure up, pressure up. They knew they had to keep themselves in it. So I think they did really well um, to to get themselves over the line there. I was actually impressed with uh, Ruben Jinby, 12 tackles. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I his, think his, ball, his ball use may not be you know, at AFL standard just yet, but 12 tackles in, in your first game. Uh, yeah. Something the West Coast midfield needed. Uh, compared to their experienced players, who I thought were a bit of a letdown, mm. guys like Gaff, Kelly, She just weren't at their absolute best. Oh, how did I think of that? Kelly, jeez. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nick Suvlak, he's six goals. Uh, the way he's going, oh, it's only round one, but if he gets, you know, 50 plus goals this season, he could be a smoky for an All Australian. And in that North Melbourne side, that'd be good to see. Uh, another smoky for an All Australian pick could be LDU. Davies Uniac, 32 disposals, 10 clearances. I thought this was LDU, his best game ever. He was on yeah. fire. I, I I have written, uh, it's something that I should have put in my notes, was LDU just the entire game, he, all the freedom he had, you mm. could just see he was loving his time. Like, you know when you can sort of see that someone just falls back? In, it's, and it's, it's all from body language, of course, but I reckon he fell back in love with footy that mm. game. Like, oh, he, was, he was just allowed to run amok. Sleep paralysis, but it's North Melbourne fans singing Kanga 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 Roo Roo Roo. Oh, geez. Oh, no, they win. If they win next week, look out. Yeah, how to scare a West Coast supporter? Rebuild. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Sorry, all right, it's all right. time to accept the fight. <laughs> all right, let me let me jump in there with one more thing about West Coast. And all right, don't kill me, West Coast fans. All right, but I have a question to you if you're watching. Do Kelly and Gaff give a crap at all? Do they give a crap? <laughs> they are running around 
like they have collected their checks and they have cashed out. Now, is that something in the comment section mm. below, everybody? Make you know, sure eat know. me alive, you eat out. me alive, you know, attack me all you want. But that's I've been, I've been reading that, I've been seeing that, and yeah, from what they've shown on the field, Kelly is better than that. So is Gaff, and mm. yeah. Well, a team that can do better is Brisbane. Uh, they fell flat. The, the preseason hype that, uh, that, that oh. never delivered. But to be fair, Port Adelaide were at their absolute best. I reckon you got to give praise to Port more than we discredit Brisbane. I mean, 18-18, 126 to 11-6, 72 against one of the best sides. You know, the side that is supposedly the side to beat this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. You, you gotta, you gotta backport it. I think I a lot of uh, some of these, some of these games. I'm probably eating a bit of bit of words. Port's probably one of the big ones. I probably mm. didn't give Port enough. I, I think we all probably did give Port enough credit here. Mm. I think their recruits uh, showed a lot. <laughs> like, they let's did. be honest, they were they were led by Jason Horn Francis. Uh, yep, he's arrived. He has arrived. Each as, much as, it out, me, as much as much as it pains me, because I, I mean, I, after all the things that went down, I'm not too big a fan of the kid yet. I mean, he's, he's gonna he's yeah, gonna have to now. earn it. He's gonna have to earn it. But I tell you what, when with performances like he had on on the weekend, uh, yeah, that's how you earn it. Because <laughs> uh, he was on fire. The other recruit I was just gonna quickly mention was uh, Junior. Uh, Junior absolutely killed it. Um, you know, another great pickup for Port. So mm. definitely think their recruits and the off se- uh, some of their recruits from the off season have, have paid off dividends. Or I mean, already. I mean, when you're taking out the Lions in round one, you're sort of setting a standard of that's okay. That's how you want to. That's how they got to play for, you know, next couple of rounds or next couple of rounds. You know, for the rest of the season. Uh, Port failing to convert in the first half. They were down by three goals late in that second quarter. You thought maybe Brisbane could run away with it, but. Had it not been for Port failing to convert, I think the margin could have been a lot more. 18-18, oh, uh, as I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Port's midfield is scary. Uh, I put that in capital letters. Their it's midfield scary. is scary. <laughs> uh, mm. Connor Rosie, uh, Zach Butters, Jason Horn francis Dersma, Drew. They're all, what, 25 and under. And you've got to fit Boak in when he comes back from his rib injury. Jason Horn francis 25 disposals, three tackles, 10 clearances, 10 inside, 50 entries, and a goal. Again, if you're North Melbourne fans, you're a little bit pissed off. Why, aren't, why wasn't he doing that for us? Uh, I don't know what's in the ice baths at Port Adelaide for him to do that. But uh, I do rate his high socks and his um, short shorts and the blonde hair as well. It just looks 1980s all over again. Any concerns for Brisbane or is it just a case of, right, let's bounce back next week? Oh, ooh. Yeah, the, the midfield got absolutely bullied. JHF and the boys picked up the midfield Lions players by the ankles and freaking chucked them around, getting the change out of their pockets. <laughs> it was embarrassing. They got bullied. Like, a first, second-year player, freaking stiff-harming Neil into the freaking underground, just boots. Like, that, that was embarrassing absolutely bullied like and they're supposed to be the best midfield in the comp Pants. no that's j that's jhf and the boys <laughs> <laughs> like the oh, kid yeah you as me. you guys <laughs> as you boys <laughs> said before like north would probably be crying the north fans are crying and i had faith in him the whole time i was not one of his haters this kid's got an amazing ceiling and he just probably saw that, well, nobody else gives a shit at North at that time and point. Why should I? And so he's moved on, and now he's surrounded by superstars pretty much, and he's having a fun time. He's going to be something to look forward to this season. Todd Marshall, he was he was actually surprising to me. He looks like he may have a breakout year. I mean, I may be going early. It's the first round, but... He got into the good spots and he, he slotted his shots. That's all you can really ask of. It was kind of hard because I, I, I picked the two, like, you know, I think I had two games in a row where it was just sort of absolutely half-hearted watching by the end of it because they both ended up just absolute decimations in the second half. That's a good way to move on to the next game. Uh, we've got Melbourne versus Dogs. 
on Saturday night. Uh, 17-13, 115 to 9 goals, 11-65, way of Melbourne. Uh, boys, Cozzy was absolutely on fire in this game. Cozzy Pickett did a thank you, fuck you, bye. Pretty much, yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, I've got, I mean, uh, I've got that written down, what's, what's happened, but uh, I thought we'd start off with praising him. Uh, he had another blinder. I think it was four goals in the end. Absolute blinder as usual. Uh, Cozzy, what more can you say about the guy? He's a freak. He is mm. awesome to watch. Um, only problem is he likes to hit Smith. <laughs> um, so Cozzy was reported for basically torpedoing himself into Bailey Smith. Um, I don't think I've ever seen, like, I gotta give Cozzy credit. I don't think I've ever seen someone torpedo themselves like that. Maybe, maybe not since the nineties. <laughs> uh, mm. he was, he was off the ground. He was, he did everything that you, old school that you could possibly do, but, uh, he's gotten himself suspended for two weeks. Uh, probably lucky it's two weeks. I reckon if, uh, Smith had been knocked out, you're staring down the barrel easily at four to five. Hey. He's done the freaking make way for Willie. There's no way he can he can, <laughs> he can fight that. He's read my mind. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> make way for Willie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he's like gotten all hyped up for the UFC this weekend, and he's throwing crosses out. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, but he's a, he's amazing. But he needs to settle down. That's all I've got to say. Well, what can we say about the doggies? Uh, oh, I've got a lot to say about the doggies here. Now, <laughs> call, call it bias, maybe because I'm living in Footscray or Maribyrnong, the good part of Footscray. How can you go into this game with Norton, Ugelhagen, Darcy and Lobb and only have two goals between them? The, uh, the tolls went absolutely missing. We talked marks. about this. Mm. Seven marks inside 50 for the whole game. 42% efficiency inside 50. No Stephen May. How is this possible? <laughs> I mean, Jake yeah. Lever tore him, tore him to shreds. Yeah. I was like, okay. Harrison Petty took him. But that's Lever. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a joke. Well, oh, it was and, embarrassing. And, yeah, people may shit on us for having the dogs as our slider. And case in point, you go mm. in with four tall forwards, you better deliver it to them, and you didn't. Uh, where's the forward pressure? Nowhere. And you got beat on the counter-attack. That's what happened last year. It's happening again right now. This is what I mean. We're all fired up on this one. What is with the dogs and getting absolutely, our uh, midfield specifically, and getting absolutely decimated by Melbourne's midfield? They're not invincible, Melbourne's, but they're damn good. But they're not invincible. And this is a, Mel uh, a doggies midfield that has Bontempelli, um, you know, Tim English in it, Libertore. You know, these are players that aren't, you know, slouches. Uh, it's, it's, it's saying to me that the dogs get beaten in there so easily by Melbourne every time. They just get outbodied and outrun. Right? They just, there's, yeah. Um, there's no two-way run for, yeah. for the dogs. Midfield. Once they turn it over in the forward half, that's it. There's, there is one man that I say, uh, Bons and Pelly though. You know, he, yeah. that man is all heart. Uh, he... What would they do? Like, if that if he goes ever goes down with an injury, oh, that scares yeah. me. Mm. Oh, leadership, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, well, we, we're shitting on the forwards, yeah. Like, well, you know, one one in particular everybody likes to shit on is about, right. what, six eight, six nine. He has bleach blonde hair. He has the size, a heart the size of a pea. Um, <laughs> he just went missing. He was, uh, yeah. I, I know the dogs fans probably didn't want him, but like, what's the point of him? Why is he there? <laughs> it's just a walking tree on the field. Like, what the hell was that? He's like a limp dick in an orgy. Yeah, he's absolutely useless. He tapped out, I think. He was about to use a cock flavored lollipop. <laughs> he's just. Oh. He's, it just shits me. He's this. He's got all the makings of somebody that can just destroy the competition. Yet he has the heart of somebody that's five foot fucking nothing. He's oh, mm, I can go on about him all day, but 
no, that's it. It's that's all enough. good. I, do, I don't think there's too much more we need to go on about this game. I mean... Oh, I actually got a couple of notes as well. Well, Cosby kicked four, Ben Brown kicks four. McDonald didn't kick a goal, but for some reason, that guy holds up Melbourne's forward line structure. Like, he is a key pillar in Melbourne's forward line, Tom McDonald. I don't know why. I'm not sure behind the science of it, but it it works for him. Uh, Kay Chandler is Kmart Ollie Wines, the way he looks. Future boy. Because uh, he got two. Because <laughs> he got... <laughs> I can't. He does. He's got a box head. He looks like Matt Menard. He looks like a character in Minecraft. If we ever get Lego freaking AFL, he's going to be on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Him and only wines. Just tapping it. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to love Melbourne v Port midfield battle. Oli Wines, K Chandler. Oh, God. Like, man. It's, Spider- hurt, it's Spider-Man like... pointing at Spider-Man. <laughs> I need to ask you... What was your thoughts on Liam Jones? Oh, um, I, I mean, I never was. I mean, I was upset the, that he wasn't able to play for us last year because I think that that was one of our big problems in the middle of the season was the fact that, um, you know, Liam, uh, the fact that we didn't have Liam Jones and we were missing a, a, a basically a tall defender for most of that middle part of the season. Um, I actually felt bad for Jonesy because Jonesy went down with a. I thought he had done his shoulder, but yeah, I mean, it was actually the last point I was going to make on this on this game was only injury for the game was Liam Jones um, went down with a neck injury, uh, a real weird one too. Looks like he'll be available for next week, so that's good news. Um, yeah, hate, you hate seeing some, something like that. Apparently, it was a weird knock from Josh Bruce, top of the head, so a bit of an odd one. You know, time will tell how well he goes for them, though. I mean, we spoke about it last week. Three years is a very long time, and especially when the first yeah. week he's, he comes back, he does. there's an injury. Even though it was a freak accident, you know, it's something to go, oh, you know, he's still older. Injuries take a long time to heal from. Mm. Gold Coast v Sydney, commentated by Meso's girl Kelly Underwood. Oh, no, I didn't even see. I, I didn't even watch it. I watched the mini with that with no audio because <laughs> I was watching it while I watched the Frio game. Oh, no. If you get rid of junk time, the last ten minutes might have been the worst performing side this round. Like their mm. inside fifty efficiency was at thirty eight percent. They got up to forty five percent with a few late goals. Uh, Matt Rowell looked fit. Apparently, he's lost a few kilos. Constable had twenty six disposals, but boy, did he butcher the footy! I was going to say, uh, like, if you want a bit of the old, uh, just a little bit of a super coach update. <laughs> uh, got Constable in the super coach. You know, like you said, 26 disposals. You wouldn't think it. He had something like 63. Like, that's not yeah. a 26 disposal game. Uh, that's mm. a that's a looking like a 16 disposal game. So, yeah, interesting interesting to say the least. But to be fair, good to see him out there at least. Sydney were just a class above. That's that's yeah. pretty much it. Got, uh, probably the best, not uh, statistically, probably the best performing side outside of Port Adelaide, but Gold Coast... Yeah, that's all I've got yeah. for him. Is ugh, just like, yeah. Any injuries? Any like just the game plan? Just Sydney too good. Um, so yeah, Sydney too good. That was it. Best best way to look at it. Yeah. So 16, 14, 110 to nine goals, seven sixty one. As Mace, uh, Nath said, it was mostly junk time for the Suns. But the mm. Sydney play. I think Sydney Sydney's domination needs to be acknowledged. Nine players, 20-plus disposals, and 12 individual goal kickers for the game. I mean, fair effort. Um, I think it's more the 20-plus disposals that's something to acknowledge. I think we can all safely say, and Nath, you pointed this out, there's going to be no hangover for the Swans at all. I reckon they'll break that. I think it's yeah, 28 or nearly 30 years since a side that got flogged you know, won a final. I think Sydney will yeah. have a good chance of doing I, I, it. Yeah, big chance. I, I, I think the Suns are a bit hard to gauge because I do think playing Sydney straight off the bat is a is a bit of a difficult one to go. Because I do mm. still think they're that middle of the table building team. So who knows really? But to be fair, you don't want to you don't want to get spanked like they did that first game. The only mm. injury from this game was uh was old Sammy Collins. Uh he he was he was out with that, with that head. Seriously, I don't get this head. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, he was out with a head injury. Um, so Buddy had uh, was on report. 
uh, has mm. been suspended for one game. I tell you what, I, I reckon that was lucky to be one game. That was a brutal hit on Sam Collins. I reckon two. Yeah, elbow was out. Elbow was stuck out. Um, every intent to, to hurt and hit. Don't know how Buddy Buddy got away with one, but at the end of the day, buddy. it's Buddy. Yeah. So yeah, uh, looks it's, like it's he's going to miss the miss playing Hawthorne for the last time. Oh, they don't um, even need him. So, but that's it. But that's he'll never play. But it's more that he'll never play Hawthorne again. <laughs> Buddy chose to bump. I mean, they still reckon it's that old school mentality every now and again as well, where they they choose to bump for no reason. But yeah, so old Bud looks like he's going to miss out on playing playing the Hawks, and Sammy Collins probably misses a week. They, I think they said so. Could be could be out the concussion. So yeah, so real surprising they only got a week. Um, but again, I don't. I mean, again, I think it's only because it happened on Saturday night. So who knows where Sammy Collins is at yet? We move on <clears throat> to GWS versus Adelaide. A bit of a nothing again. A bit more of an, another nothing game that was a little bit en- pretty entertaining though in the end. Oh, um, God, I'm oh yeah, I'm, I actually found uh, it quite so entertaining. I, the two, in summarising it, two words: Cramp City. <laughs> it was. Degree. 33 degrees, and boy, so many players were cramping up, particularly Giants players, which made this win a little bit more impressive. No club debutants, no first-year players, which was a little bit interesting, which made me think, uh, you know, there might be something there. They may, you know, everyone's tipping them to be bottom four. Some have tipped them to be the wooden spoon side for this year. But maybe there's something there with their top-end talent that they could be a surprise finalist. Adelaide, uh, I think they were the younger side coming into this game, less experienced. Mm. Uh, the first quarter, uh, GWS defensive efforts, non-existent. Just two tackles, 20 turnovers, Adelaide failing to convert. Uh, it could have been put to bed at quarter time against a good side. Mm. Uh, I mentioned this quite a few times in my notes, Adelaide failing to convert, Adelaide failing to convert. Uh, I also wrote it during the second quarter, both teams suck. It was <laughs> it just second quarter, just wasn't. I wasn't impressed with any side and and... Adelaide, my God, uh, you've only got yourselves to blame for losing this one. Uh, yeah, Tom absolutely. Green is the orange version of Patrick Cripps. Mm, Tall yep. body midfielder, 37 disposals. He's a bull. He is an absolute bull for GWS. Adam Kingsley is an angry boy. Uh, don't get on his bad side. He looks like somebody would drop you in a heartbeat. Adam Kingsley is the sort of coach who will pull you aside one-on-one and beat the fuck out of you. <laughs> Just... Shane McAdam will be in trouble uh, that bump, a lot of sweat flying off that one, he'll probably have a week I don't think it'll be two weeks, Jacob Weir did play out the game Harry the Perryman, driver, you know, I'll be there, I'll get, I'll get the scoop for him <laughs> get the scoop Harry Perryman went down with a hamstring in the first quarter, Whitfield went down injured, Josh Kelly yep. went down injured, so Jeez. the Giants only had I think one player one on the bench. for the last 30 minutes yeah, one on the bench and so many Giants players cramping up. Uh, it was actually kind yeah. of funny to look at. Sorry to uh, say. Can we, yeah, I was going to say spe- special shout out to, I think it was Haynes, who took a shot on goal. Uh, sorry, he, he initially started cramping before the shot. Uh, yeah. So he's taken, taken taken the full 30, basically, to get the cramp right. Uh, then he's taken the shot with the cramp because he couldn't get rid Ooh. of it. Mm. Oh, it was funny to watch. Like he, he was giggling through the whole <laughs> thing. Like he All he could do was laugh. So he kicked it and immediately started cramping again. And the first thing he's high five and players while sitting on the ground. <laughs> yeah, he drank the pickle juice as well when he was on the ground. I saw that. Jeez. Someone gave him the pick someone gave him the pickle juice. He needed it. That boy was cramping all over. Those legs went fully he, his legs locked into place. He was like, I'm done. I'm down, boys. I'm down. <laughs> I've done my job. Toby Green. Oh, to, mm. Tobias Green. He's the captain. We call him Tobias now. Four goals as captain. A uh, very good effort, but he only played down forward. He really played much in the midfield. Uh, I thought he was very good as a leader on ground, and that's what the Giants had. The Crows did not have any on-field leadership at all. I said it again: the, the Crows only have themselves to blame. Who stood up for the Adelaide Crows in that third and fourth quarter? Who took the game on? Nobody. I saw Luke Ped- Luke Pedler at times try to take the game on, and he's a youngster. He's a future boy. But who else he took it on? He's probably the yes. only player on the field who could ha- hold their head high in that last. Should have, They could have realistically gotten themselves back into it that they just couldn't convert on. 
So, like you said, yeah. you, you've, you've pretty much summed it up. They had no one else but themselves to blame. And it looks like they're going to come out of it with a report, uh, with somebody um, reported and suspended. Because no, I don't nice. reckon there's a way Shane Adam, McAdam gets off. So, hmm. not a good week for the Crows. <laughs> Last five minutes, Fogarty, Mr. Set Shot. He typically converts those ones. I, I'm sorry, but Adelaide, what the hell is going on? I know it's only round one, but that is a that's four points down the drain. And you've got mm. Richmond next week at home. I know it's at home. Uh, you'll probably get up for that one. But that's the sort of loss that can set up a season. It's also the sort of win for the Giants that could set up their season or set up their culture. I still don't think the Giants will make finals, but... As someone that, I'm going to be honest, I don't like the Giants. I don't like the way they were gift wrapped at so many draft picks. But that's the sort of win that gets supporters on your side. Uh, I'm like, actually happy. I'm happy for the Giants in this one. The way they won it, the way they went about it. I was actually, like I, like I said, we're not, we're not the biggest fans of the Orange team, but I was very, very impressed with them today. I think that was, a, I have written as my number one note, spirited win in the heat, one left on the bench. I mean... 100%. It's, there's nothing more you can really... That's all we really need to say about it is that it was a spirited win. They, I thought with 10 minutes to go, I think I turned to my partner and said, there is no chance. I said, I said they're just going to have to cling on here. That's all they're yeah. going to have to do because I think you, you've said it best. They were, they were just cramping all over the place. I thought GWS is going to have to cling on here. That's all they can do. Because Adelaide, to me, looked like they should have easily run over the top of them. I mean, oh, any team absolutely. realistically should have run... Yeah, as you said... They realistically, any team should have ran over the top of them because they they just had nothing left on the bench. But no, Adelaide decided to to just somehow throw away another game, which again I think Adelaide still needs to improve desperately. So yeah, it's just a an, another another close loss. No tackles inside fifty for the entire game. What? Their, really? their in, in their inside fifty efficiency was pretty good, but they just weren't converting. But no tackles inside 50. The Giants had 18 for the game. I'm just, I feel like a disappointed father um, <laughs> with the Crows. Like, I had high expectations, like higher than my own club coming into this, this opening round. And I was like, first half I was watching, um, and I was like, yeah, this is what I expected. I expected them to be on top of them. You know, and then half time comes, and it's as if they've blown a load in the first half and they've done, gone to the pub. Um, <laughs> and then they just allowed GWS to get back into the game when they had no right to. And they still couldn't finish them off with one man on the bench. It was just like, guys, you're making me look like an idiot. I've talked you <laughs> up, and you're letting me down. Hopefully, they will come back from this. I still reckon they can be one of the most dangerous teams in the first eight rounds, but they've got to bounce back and bounce back fast. I tipped Adelaide too, so I'm a little bit more pissed yeah. off about it as mm. well. Don't worry, I think we all did, so you got a pass there. Uh, before we get into the next game, Harris and Himmelberg. Sorry, mark of the year already. I think, okay, yeah, it's funny. It's we, we criti Now, I'm going to say this one because we criticised the shit out of you for th saying it on Thursday night. But then I saw a heap of people saying it today. <laughs> so I was like, who knows? Apparently we can win it in round one. Which, Hang time, Harry. To be fair, I believe Chrissy Aaron won goal of the year in uh, round one. So it's possible. It's doable. Adelaide, no leadership. They look like a bunch of dumb kids out there. Speaking of dumb kids, Hawthorne. <laughs> They're the new dumb kids of the AFL. Uh, yeah, they actively let, let, like let's they congratulate Hawthorne. Win. Hawthorne have just won themselves the Harley Reid Cup. I don't even think we should really harp on this game. 19 goals, 10, 124 to 9 goals, 11, 65. Essendon run out winners. Um, the young Hawks are learning. That's all you can really say about those young the young Hawks. They got rid of a lot mm. of talent in the offseason. Uh, they got a lot of learning to do. Um, especially when you're going down to a team like Essendon like that. Um, you're going to pay. I think you're going to enjoy this as, as one note that I have for Essendon. I guess Essendon did okay. <laughs> well, I would, I would, before Meso or yourself get back into it, I know mm. Essendon are on top of the ladder after round one. Oh. Con 
a convincing win, 59 points. Oh. Let's see Let's see how they go in rounds two, three, and four before we make a proper judgment on them. It's a bit harsh for Essendon fans. You know, they, yeah. They're celebrating a good win. They're on top of the ladder. Enjoy it. Soak it in. Uh, let's see some consistency, though. Let's see them beat Gold Coast next round. Let's see them beat St Kilda in round three. Oh, wow. The Giants around four. It's an easy start. Let's see how yeah, they go. Sure. Now, one one thing from what I've heard is apparently Archie Perkins had a, had an absolute ripper. So he did. His now I've agreed with with this this for a long time. His ceiling is anything. He he mm. can be an absolute gun player. But yeah, it looks like there was just not a lot that really went on in terms of uh, did Wiedemann, I think Wiedemann may have played better than expected. He did um, too. But. That's not really yeah. much. Again, this is against Hawthorne. Like, wait until they start playing some better teams and we'll see where some of these players are at. I did catch the last two minutes of Hawthorne Essendon. Hawthorne kicked the last two goals. The funny thing about them was every time they kicked the goals, a kid would take the mark and then run off. <laughs> That's the only highlight I could find out of it. But yeah, those kids, the kids are all right. I got another question for you, boys, before we transition on. Um, who took over in the midfield for Essendon? Because when I was watching, it was pretty. It was pretty even. Oh, it's, uh, between it's, it's a it's a it's Parish Shield. That's mm. it. I heard yeah, uh, Parish, no... Parish had a heap of cheap, uncontested possessions. Yeah. As, as normal. Oh, wait yeah. for it. Parish laid a tackle. <gasps> oh, big, oh. big. I think this is going to be mentioned in every single podcast. Peter Wright. Uh, what a what a oh. set of circumstances, Peter Wright. Well, <laughs> it's announced as a was it three years? It was a three year extension. Oh, four, year extension four, four year extension. Two two hours later, gets announced as uh, doing a shoulder. A day later, is announced as being out for half the season. <laughs> Poor boss. What a oh. week oh. for Peter well, Wright. Let, let's just say let's just say this. We love him. Me, JD, Mace Man, the Space Man, we love him. Two right. meter Peter. Two meter Peter. Right. We, we, we actually love him. He is not worth four years. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 what they're relying on, Peter Wright and Sam Wiedemann. So that's why I have I still don't I I, I still don't think they're gonna do much this year. To be fair, but, uh, I think, well, Jeremy Howell signed a contract and then he breaks his arm. Peter well, Wright's done a little bit worse, but thinking of not doing much, Frio. Mm. Do we that do we game. want to go into it? Because I, as we as we went into recording the podcast, we uh, you know I think we were all probably doing the same thing, watching the end of the now, Fremantle St Kilda game. Let, let's what let's do a GWS. Hell happened. Let's do a GWS. Mm -hmm. Let's slowly build into it. I want to put in my dot note dot points first. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so I wrote down uh, that orange logo on Freo's jumper is not a look. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck that is. That's yeah, that was weird. Thirty percent efficiency inside fifty. Sorry, that's the stat there. You Their forwards it. struggled. That's what I've got written. Their forwards absolutely struggled today. Yeah, but I also wrote down St Kilda's defensive zones are clear from the get go. That's a clear Ross Lyon tactic. I also yeah, wrote yeah. down this question, John, that you may love. Brad Hill, did he use his speed today? <laughs> you know, all I could think of. So again, context. <laughs> St Kilda Fremantle last year. St Kilda fans, you really need to have a think sometimes of what you shout out. We had a guy oh, the, next to us. Sorry, the entire game. sorry, Saints fans, you're simple. They're the worst. They're the worst. And I live near Moorabbin, so I might get killed. So I, it was so yeah. Literally last year, or we, every single time, like he could have been doing nothing. He was backed into corners, and they literally use your speed, Hill. Like oh my god, oh, but my so. The floor is yours. Rev up that chemo because that match gave me fucking cancer. Jesus <laughs> Christ. My God, that was a classic Ross Lyon game. Low scoring, grindy, horrible piece of shit to watch. Jesus Christ. Oh, my. It, it's, it is the parking the bus of AFL. It is just hard, hard watch. Like, good on them. Good on them. They understood that they didn't have any tall timber up forward. And so they had everybody back. And there was times where our boys had no fucking clue what to do because you got Tabner standing there in the goal square. 
just trimming his fingernails, fucking not doing anything a key forward should do. Or when we see that we're going into the forward, he will run up to a, you know, a friendly forward and bring his opponent with him so that they can jump over him and spoil it. No, awesome, Tabner. Awesome. I fucking. We move the ball slower than my nan. All right. I. And she's she's lost all of her mobility. She needs a walker to move. <laughs> You're playing like Betty White out there. It was fucking horrible. I. The the number one thing that comes to mind is the Saints gave away an absolute shit ton of frees. Like, disciplinary, stupid frees that the fans didn't like. Half of them were like clotheslines, you know, a smack across the head, or, or arguing with the umpire, and yet every single time we'd get boo over the fucking top of us. It's like, do you cunts know the rules? Oh, I'm going off. Do they know the rules? <laughs> do they know the rules? Or do you just yell boo at everything? No, I'll answer that question. They boo at anything. They they, most at fans anything. do it. Most fans do it. But Saints fans, simpletons, they will boo at anything. I just insult people, apparently. My, my only positives are Darcy destroying Marshall, which then goes into a negative. Sinclair had fucking free run. And just tore us apart. They didn't even need a bother in the rock contest because he was always there to grab it and then get and go. Could have really um, used that Blake Akers, hey? No, Hughes did enough. Like Hughes did well than enough. He actually surprised me this game. He was one of the positives. It was him, Shooter, and Freddie. They can hold their head high. Oh, obviously Bayshaw. Bayshaw and Sarong did enough for me to be happy, but. And the boys at the back, obviously, Coxie and, and Pierce and Young. But the forwards, geez, it's what, like six, eight, ten years now? And we still don't have our shit together? It's not a Rory Log problem. It's a freaking system problem. There's just clumping. I, I, I want to smack my head across against the wall because each time I go into a game... I know that all of our forwards are going to be standing in a little clump. Nobody wants to lead. Ever. Tracy, I like his aggressiveness, but it was way too much. And he gave so many stupid frees away. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really have many positives from that game. I did find one Ooh. positive free on that game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. only a, a stat, though. Brennan Cox had 20 marks. Uh, yeah. Equal highest for any freeo player with Luke McFarlane, so that's about it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I, I, have, I have literally no positives in the... I mean, you, you, there was... I don't know. It was an interesting... It was just an odd watch. I think your forwards had no fight. Your midfield looked looked pretty good at times, but that as they should with the players that are in there. Defence, uh, you know, I'm surprised you leaked goals the way you did, considering you still, like... The caliber you still have in there is still some absolute quality. So we'll come back yeah. to that in a sec. I've got some. I've got some pointers on that. No, de well, don't take over because that's a, that was my point. It's just I still think there's quality through that defense. I think it's just I don't know. It seems like it might be a bit, little bit out of out of whack at the moment or something. Well, like all right, knowing Ross Lyon and knowing how he plays and how his game plan is defense orientated. The fact that we didn't use our pace at all and transition so slowly was just, you know, head scratching. Like we have some of the speediest halfbacks and with long bomb kicking, and then we got some of the speediest small forwards and we didn't utilize it. And we allowed them to flood back into defense and then nobody wants to lead or there is no room to lead. And then they can then, we then bomb it long, hoping for the best, like we would under Ross Lyon. And then they're able to get it out the back. I've seen this same shit for the like, last eight years. It's, it's ridiculous, guys, and it's predictable. We're better than this. We're better than them all over the ground. And yet we got dominated all over the ground. 
Good question coming up here. Mm-hmm. Nat Fife, Coleman medalist. How do you go? <laughs> no. I don't know who was who was freaking bringing that up because that was never happening. We Absolutely didn't have never the, happened. Didn't have the, we know who Jack, who tipped Jack Gunston, and that was half a lemon James Sicily. Right. Um, but we still don't, don't know, know who tips Danny Five. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how what we do with him. Like he did one good lead, you know, that I can think of off the top of my head. He did a few pressure acts, but he just doesn't have the pace anymore. If he ever did, like him and Tabs, pretty much were just extra people taking up space that just got in our way at times more than anything. <laughs> Fucking dickhead! All right, Tabana is useless. Absolutely useless. We are not winning a premiership with him. He has to be the worst key forward I think I have ever seen in my entire life. He he runs into the freaking the fat. <laughs> oh man, it's either that or he's jogging around. <laughs> I've oh man, now let me let me breathe. Oh. He's just useless. I, he needs to go out. At times, I was just thinking, why is this fella playing over Sturt? Each, every, every time I saw him, it's like, why is Sturt or Amos not out there? Why is Sturt or Amos not out there? Like, Fife needs to sit on the bench. Once again, this this arrow is just about our, our, about our forward line. Fife, As you're a forward, done, yes. Yeah, uh, you're done. You, you know, have a rest in the waffle for a couple of weeks. Bring in some new blood. You're fucking done. We need Sturt. He can kick goals and tackle people. And we need Amos to get some games in him. Tabs, you're done, son. You're done. Get out of here. Boom. Arrow. Oh, oh May- Meso's arrow. That's a fucking pipe bomb. Oh, he's absolutely destroyed Matty Tabana. Like, That's let's hope the crap man right never lit. I was going to say, like, the, the anger there. And, and you know what? The point as well to then say, no, he needs to be out for these two players. Well done, Mason. Well done. <laughs> Whoa, man. Like, actually, I feel a little bit better getting that out now. <laughs> oh, man. Boys! Let's go break some hearts! Boys Club. Our first nominee for the year. So, there is... I had two written down. I've got my backup just in case. But uh, the person I picked had an absolute stellar Friday night. He kicked the ball out of the full. And kicked it straight, it kicked it straight into my heart and straight into my boy stable. So the boy we have this week is Ben Miller from the Richmond Football Club. On Friday night, he, uh, Thursday night, he had nine disposals, five kicks, four handballs, four marks, one tackle, and one out on the full. Uh, if you ask me, that's an absolute ripper effort. Uh his stats overall are 13 games in total, three goals in his career. He debuted in 2021, and he was picked 63 in the 2017 National Draft and was re-rookie last year as in the 2020, as 20, uh, sorry, in 2021 as a Category A rookie. If you ask me, I don't know. I mean, who knows what these things are, but at the end of the day, Ben Miller, take a bow. You are the first inductee or first nominee for the boys' club. Love his work. You remember this, pal. You're a boy in a man's world. Oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy. And boy, Hall of Fame it is. All right. My first nominee. Now, I had someone lined up because he set the standards at the time. Uh, but given Harry Sheasel's 34 disposals, I've had to change it up a bit. And I've gone to this guy here because he's a forgotten name of the last few years. Uh, two club player, starting at Brisbane, finishing up at West Coast, pick 52 in the 2007 National Draft. Uh, fun fact about pick 52 at the time, uh, Carlton traded pick 52 to Brisbane for Richard Hadley. Is Richard Hadley <laughs> my boy? Is Richard Hadley my boy? No. 
Uh, fun fact about the 07 draft, uh, pick 54 was Carol Hooker. So, yeah, a lot of teams missed out there. Uh, but my first nomination for the Stephenson Warrior Hall of Fame is Brad Dalziel. Uh, spelled Brad, B R A double D, like Brad, but Thad mixed together. And I'm, I hope you boys can look up his Wikipedia page because there's some fun tidbits on this one. His nickname there is Razzle Dazzle. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did not put that, that I, I did not put that in there. You can look it up. Uh, Give him the old Razzle Dazzle. Razzle Dazzle. Uh, his first preseason at Brisbane broke the beep test record. So he's in for big things. Uh, his debut game, though, was pretty big. Round 16, 2008 against West Coast. 32 disposals, 114 supercoach points. Oh, boy. Love it. Only played seven games in 2008, but averaged 26 disposals. Kicked his, first goal, in his, kicked his first goal in his fifth game against the Western Bulldogs. A set shot from the boundary, drop punts. Highly recommend looking at it. It's a pretty good goal. Round 21, sixth game against the Carlton Blues. Got, got a NAB Rising Star Award or nomination for that one. Second year, only played eight games. 21.5 disposals a game. Uh, two cheeky Brownlow votes against Collingwood. In our lobs. But still, two cheeky Brownlow votes. We love it. We love it. Uh, unfortunately, though, did not play in Brisbane's final series that year. 15 games at Brisbane and was ultimately traded to the West Coast Eagles. Uh, another eight games in 2010, first year at West Coast, averaging 21 disposals a game. Barely played in 2011 and 2012. 2013, he played 17 games, averaged 16 disposals. He was the sub five times, though, so who knows what he could have been. Now, look up his Wikipedia page. This is the final quote on his Wikipedia. Delisted at the end of the 2013 AFL season. And he returned to his original Waffle team, East Fremantle, where he is currently a below average player. Not my <laughs> quote. It's actually on his Wikipedia page. <laughs> Poor guy. So in conclusion, six seasons, 43 games, 23 goals, and two cheeky Brownlow votes. Ladies and gentlemen, the first nominee for the Stephenson Warrior Hall of Fame, Brad Dalziel. I see Meso smiling. Now, he wrestled two matches on AEW last week. Did he wrestle at all this week? But I looked up his cage match uh, rating. And oh, apparently he wrestled at Elevation. <laughs> no, he wrestled at an event called WrestleFest 27, NEW, oh, okay. Northeast Wrestling. But the match took place last week. But because I have only known, noticed this now, we're going to talk about it. And there's a full match on YouTube, and I watched it today. <laughs> All right, so he wrestled WrestleFest 27 against a wrestler called JT Dunn. Have you boys heard of JT Dunn? Nope. Good. I, en I envy you both. Uh, this happened on the 11th. Uh, again, I'm going to claim this match for this week. Uh, before the match started, this is awesome chance. <laughs> Fight <And> forever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway this is awesome chance before the match started uh the first minute uh the camera cuts are shocking uh i would have thought maybe it's a kevin dunn camera boy doing this one the camera cuts again not the shaky but just cutting different angles not a fan of it the commentator gets a two out of ten for me in this one he didn't pronounce his name correctly takeshita not take a shitter, but just take a shitter. Four syllables. That's not on. You got to pronounce his name properly. I'm learning it. If you're a commentator, you better learn it. Uh, halfway through the match, another this is awesome chant. I'm starting to hate this match because of the chants. Uh, Takeshita did deliver a lovely brain buster. I, I rate the brain buster. It's an underrated move. I don't think anyone uses it enough. If they use it like a super kick or the equivalent of a super kick, I would be so happy. Uh, JT, <laughs> JT Dunn delivered a double foot stomp with one foot. I'm not kidding. And the commentator, <laughs> did say, the, the commentator said the exact thing. He goes, 
lands that double foot stomp with one foot. Whoa, how Jace, do you even manage that? It's like falling on your own head. How is that possible? JT Dunn is officially the shortest wrestler in the world to deliver a tombstone pole driver. Uh, this is awesome chance again, three quarters of the way into this match. Uh, JD, bloody hell. Aye. There was a fight forever chant. Take a lap. <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes into this match, fight forever chant. Uh, lovely blue thunderbomb by Takeshita. Tremendous feat of strength later on this match and the running knee to finish the match. 6.5 out of 10, Takeshita with the win. Thanks, Takeshita. Thank what you. a boy. What a boy what, that man what, is. What a boy, exactly. I tell you what, what a what a fun week. I, I, what a weird round one. To, just to cap off the, the footy stuff, what a weird round one. It's a mixed uh, it was, bag. We're going to win it here. It's a mixed bag all over the shop. It didn't feel like... It, uh, I mean, we sort of... I think we hinted at this on, on it, like a few nights ago. It just didn't feel like round one. <laughs> um, mm. I think next week's going to be a, a lot more... I mean, interesting. I think a lot more teams will come out a lot harder. But I think it was a very weird start to the season. It's a mixed bag this week. We've got one winner here, a loser, and a team that drew. Yeah, I mean, how am I meant to feel? I mean, oh. Better than me. Yeah, that's actually a fair call. Well, well you got North, you're at North Melbourne next week, Meso. You've got to win that, surely. we got Geelong. Who have you got? we got Port. Scary midfield. Well... Be interesting. I'm going to my first game of the year. I was meant to go on Thursday, but the game was too packed, so I couldn't be bothered. And my knee was a bit sore, so I couldn't be bothered uh, standing for two hours. Um, at least I have seats coming up on Thursday, so no excuses. What level? If level one. Level one. May so is there yeah. anything we can do to make you happy? Well, can you delist Habana for me? I I'll put a good word in for you. I was going to say, I'll write a strongly worded letter for you. Um, yeah. I, if he's playing, I don't feel like going to the game. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, well, hmm. on that sad note, Ben Miller, the boy of the week. Brad Dalziel, boys hall of fame. I, I'm never going to, I'm not going to remember that last name. So I'm glad that I had, to, had you to say that. Dalziel? Oh, Dow Dow Zeal. Zeal. Mm, sounds and like quite, a Pokemon. And starting off the year with an absolute bang of an arrow. Setting the standards. Setting the standards. We've been Truth the boys again. from the AWO podcast. And uh, we'll, oh yeah. we'll be on Spotify first before we get on YouTube. Uh, hopefully we're not cutting down too much, but yeah, enjoy the journey. We are the journeymen. Find our socials below, uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And we shall see you next week. Spoken like a true YouTuber. <laughs>